smells the best on the team? Myself. You do? Yeah. Not right now, Joe. Oh, bro, after practice. <laughs> Did you shower yet? This was, you said this was personal. It is, bro. It is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Joe Looney. Back at it again. The A national treasure. That smell together. Gel together. Oh, wow. Starting off strong today for Cover 4. Thank you guys for joining us. We're talking more, more, more Atlanta today. We've got the scouting report for you. Everything in between that you need to know. Dave, Tay, and Jesse. But Dave is going to take us through an amazing kickoff first. It is amazing. It's real stat heavy today. Get ready for this. The Atlanta Falcons defense have seen the opponent go into their red zone 36 times this year. They've given up 27 touchdowns. 75% of the time, when the opposition goes into the red zone, they score a touchdown. That is big for what has been a struggling Dallas offense. I expect big things from them. I'm glad you brought up the defense, Dave, because a lot of people are talking about the 2017 game against Atlanta and comparing things. But one thing is new this year, and that's Chris Richard, who worked under Dan Quinn in Seattle, but now he knows that defense better than anyone did on the Cowboys staff last season. So hopefully that will be in the Dallas advantage here. I got another stat for you. The Cowboys on defense have given up the fewest explosive plays. That's runs of 15 yards or more, or passes of 20 yards or more. So kudos to this defense. They're going up against a high-powered offense at home against Atlanta. They've only given up three explosive plays this year. Let's hope we can keep Julio and the rest of that crew under wraps. Lock that down. So many stats. stats. That's what we're relying on, yeah. right? Because both teams are four and five. Both sure. in the NFC kind of fighting for that same type of thing. So let's move to the scouting report. Uh, got your number. We've got numbers yes. that we're going to yes. break down for you numbers. guys. Taylor, you got Maddie Ice. What should Matty we be worried Ice. about? Well, guys, you know, I just brought up Dan Quinn, and he has Steve Sarkeesian as his offensive coordinator second year for this guy with Matt Ryan, and they are gelling. He's really cooking under him this offseason, or this regular season. The offseason, they had to work on some things because last season people felt like they didn't have the chemistry that he had had with Shanahan before. So to see this year going in Matt Ryan's positive direction is kind of scary for the Cowboys, but he's always good. That's he's always he, good. That, he's that he's that always kind of tricky in that way, yeah. yes. Okay, so throwing the ball to Julio Jones, who is who I have on Got Your Numbers. So he's Julio's a weird because he's, you know, like an average player, I would say. Like, okay, <laughs> above average, I would say. But, guys, he has easily a 1,000 yards already this year, but only two touchdowns? Like, this is so weird to me. But what you do need to know is in his three games against the Cowboys, he averages about 117 yards per game. I feel like I always make this face when I'm like, eh, <laughs> talking player. about these opposing players. But yeah, he's really good. You probably won't see him in the end zone, but he's going to get him there. He's tied for first in the league in converting third downs. Yeah. Scary. Next up, who's next? Calvin Ridley. Well, this is why Julio Jones can't get into the end zone, because Calvin Ridley is getting all the touchdowns. He had a white hot start at the beginning of the year, 500 yards receiving, has seven touchdowns. This is the guy who they play in the slot. And this Atlanta offense, when they go to their three-headed monster, you talk about Julio Jones leading the charge, Mohamed Sanu, who is one of the best route runners in the league. And then you add this guy into the slot, and he can just work through the middle with the safeties of that third cornerback. He gets in the end zone. He's, he's slowed down a little bit as far as production, but when you go up against another team's third cornerback and you have this kind of production that you've had this year, he'll probably end up this year with somewhere around 800 yards and maybe 10 touchdowns. I just hope that we are able to keep him out of the end zone. All right, y'all have said all this bad stuff. Like people, you're feeling bad about this after this, but right? I got some good news for you. It's Atlanta defense, like I just mentioned at the top of the show, they're not very good. Talk about pass rush is almost dead last in the league. They've got 17 on the year. A big part of that is their guy, Vic Beasley, not having the year that you would have thought based on his previous success. When they went to the Super Bowl, he led the league. He's only got one sack this year. His defense, it's all tied together. They're not getting two quarterbacks. Therefore, their secondary is not good. They're giving up 300 passing yards per game. Vic Beasley, Tack McKinley can't do it all on his own. I really, really like the Cowboys' odds against this defense. I don't think Dak is getting sacked eight times this year. Ooh. Adrian Claiborne's long gone. Get him out of here. Yay. I think I like their odds. I like their odds of keeping him upright in this game. All right, we're going crowd surfing now. We took some polls today on Twitter, and you guys, again, are showing us that you are extreme homers. Yeah, right? yes. Okay, yeah. first question Glad we put out, about the Cowboys. who will have a better game, Julio Jones 
or Amari Cooper? <laughs> what did like, our fans say? I know the I know what they said, and they I said Amari. What do you guys think, though? This is not a bad choice, though. If we're looking at the numbers, Amari, the first game out, he had t eight targets. Last game, he had ten targets. He went from uh, five catches to six catches. 58 yards to 75 yards. So the numbers keep going up. If he gets more targets, he'll get more catches, he'll get more yards. So if, if the trend is going upward, he'll have over 100 yards and maybe a touchdown this week. I don't know, so I'm just saying. Who's leading the league in yards? Julio. Julio, sorry. Julio sorry. Jones. Professor right. Dave says Julio. He's at 1,000 yeah. yards. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not saying the Cowboys are gonna lose, but, but they it's said, Julio they Jones. They didn't say season, they just said one game. All right, Julio's what did our happen. fans say? Give us the answer. The percentages, if you will. Who will have a better game? Voted. Ooh, it was closer. It's close. Closer than I thought. I mean, okay. okay. Amari Cooper, 55%. Guys, next question is Byron Jones, a top five corner in the league. I don't care if this one's one sided because I think he is. Yes. For sure. Is Byron Jones, you haven't heard a peep about him this year. Not a peep, and he doesn't even follow people. He just stays on his side, does his thing, game in, game out. Maybe he'll get to keep this position this year. I mean, that would be nice, right? That, that would be, be nice start. for him. He, uh, he's having a great year. Don't get me wrong. Love David. To, I would love to see more picks. Yes, that, that's the only thing that's picks. keeping him from being and in And I category. would love for him to do it for multiple years. I mean, you think about the best cornerbacks in this league. Patrick Peterson's been doing it for a decade. Chris Harris and Aqib Tlaib. Marcus Peters, I know he's actually struggling this year. Right. He is a pick machine. You just, it's, and unfortunately, it's a bit of a popularity contest. I need to see a little bit more before I say top yeah, five. Yeah, he's a little league, quiet right now to probably be in the top five. Absolutely it, having a great year. Show us what absolutely. the fans said, though. Is Byron Jones a top five cornerback in the league? That was a Ooh. landslide. Landslide, 86% of yes. you. Way to support. We need to show this to Byron in the locker room. Last question, is the loser of this game out of the playoff race? And we don't mean like statistically, we mean like, yeah, you're probably done. Yes. Yeah. I think so. It's the hard truth. This it's is so hard right now. NFC game, Cowboys already have three NFC losses. Division matchups looming for them in the next few weeks. Same can be said for Atlanta. You fall two games under 500, and again, you've got a bad record in conference. So not just with your division, but wild card standings, you can't afford to lose this game. You just saw Zeke playoffs. on the screen. I asked him this week, you know, is it fair to say you guys played last week with your backs against the wall? And he said, definitely fair, and we got to do that for the every single game. He's right, backs against the wall the yeah. all the way through. What did our fans think? Is the loser of this game going to be out of the playoffs? Are you guys realists? Yeah. Well, because what's the famous saying that you are what you are by Thanksgiving? That's next week. Yep. So they need to know the hard Great truth point. about that. That Dropping some truth is today. hard to believe. Yeah, I'm That's not ready for that. Can we take a break? Let's take a break here from cover <laughs> four. When we come back, we are going in on Atlanta. What would a win here do for the confidence of QB1? We'll see if it matters next. Hey Dallas Cowboys fans, I'm Danny Sarek at the AT&T Media Center. Cowboys rookie linebacker Leighton Van Der Esch showed his abilities in the game against the Philadelphia Eagles. He was named the NFC Defensive Player of the Week. Van Der Esch also set a Cowboys record being credited with 19 tackles, which is the most in a game by a defensive player. Up next, the crew will talk about what a win on Sunday would mean for Dak mentally. Stay tuned. something going on here. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't mean to not. There you go. There you go. 
Okay. All right. How are we doing, guys? Start again. I feel like the humor there might be lost on you if you've never been or watched a Jason Garrett press conference, but they're literally they've been exactly the same every day since 2010. So for him to even vary it up a little bit by being confused by the recorder made my day. That, I mean, I'm that sorry if it didn't deal, make your day. It was right? a big deal. Like I literally, I jumped out of my chair when I realized, like when he changed the routine. Okay, it was good time. pathetic now. It kind of do. It. Yep, let's, okay, around the league. We're looking around the league at some of the games happening this weekend and the big one is Chiefs and Rams. This is the best game of the season. Now, it was supposed to be played in Mexico, but they had terrible field conditions. Now they're going back to Los Angeles to play this game. You're talking about the two young, bright quarterbacks of the league. They have two of the most high-powered offense. I mean, you talk about star power all over the field. Golf and Mahomes, and you got Gurley and Hunt and Tyreek Hill. I mean, the names can go on and on and on and on. This is one of those games where you're hoping that you're you know, not busy, not doing anything because you want to watch this game. Two 9-1 football teams. They can probably score 60 points apiece. Uh, I, I can't wait forward to see this game. This is the game of the year, the regular season, I will say, uh, right now in the National Football League. Next up. Eagles and Saints, guys. I think everyone was circling this game right after last weekend's game because it said, okay, Eagles have a really hard test next week. They have to go in to New Orleans, play them, and that's going to be really, really difficult. So, Eagles at Saints, I'm watching it this weekend. Eagles better get out their underdog mask because that's what they are this weekend. The Cowboys fans hope they lose, but Guys, I think it can always be a little bit crazy in this matchup. Do us a favor, Saints. <laughs> Do us a favor. That's all I ask. Yeah. Do us a favor. Next one to kind of keep an eye on a little bit is Texans at Redskins. And the reason you got to watch the Redskins is because, Tay, the Eagles coming up, these are their opponents. Saints, Giants, Redskins, Cowboys, Rams. So they're kind of in the same position as the Cowboys, right? Absolutely, like, yeah. Both four and five. Well, the Redskins are kind of sitting at the top, but they've still got to play the guys in the NFC East. So for the Cowboys, you've already kind of got your shot on these guys. Guys, but the Redskins, yeah, they're sitting pretty now, but who knows what could happen. I know. hate that. I hate that we still have so much yet to figure out. The uncertainty you know? is there. Yeah. We're going to figure something out right away starting tonight, in all honesty. And this is going to sound weird because the Seahawks and Packers didn't actually make the playoffs last year. But I thought of that as a one-off. Like, these have been the most consistent teams in the NFC for a decade. Aaron Rodgers has had his team in the playoffs damn near every year except for last year. And then, obviously, everybody knows about the Seahawks dynasty. It's wild to me that little past the halfway point of the season, the loser of this game is probably out. These teams have either made the playoffs or been right in the mix yep. until the end of the season. So I'm fascinated by the thought one of these teams is falling by the wayside. You look at the Packers looking up in the standings at the Vikings and the Bears. And then obviously the Rams are, they, the Rams can clinch the NFC West this week if yep. the Seahawks don't win. Yep. That's insane to me. And so I'm fascinated to see Who's going to step up? Neither one of these teams is used to being in this position. All right, sound off time, guys. We all know what happened. We beat it into the ground. What happened to Dak Prescott last year at Mercedes-Benz? But what would a win this year do for him? Would it really change everything? What would it do for his confidence? Really think he thinks about that game still? I don't. I mean, I'm not inside his head, but Dak is such a mentally strong guy as it is. I feel like he's frustrated and he knows that that's a mark on his career. But the fact of the matter is, is that it's not just him. It's Tyron Smith was out of that game. Chaz Green was not helped at all in that game. Guys, you saw Amazon all or nothing. The coaches talked about it. They could have been better for Dak. I think that Dak is a strong guy. He'll put it on his shoulders for sure, but he knows that this is a team game. I'm gonna flip it. I do think it matters, not because of the opponent. Really, I mean, it doesn't, Dak doesn't care about getting revenge against a team and a player that's not even there anymore. But if they can go into Atlanta on the road again and play well, second consecutive week where this offense has functioned well, second consecutive road win, I do think that would be huge. I think it would prove to them that they can be consistent, which they have not been all year. So I think this can do wonders for his mentality, but not because of who they're playing. Now, I think this does, I think it matters to him. It matters to him so much. You think much. the opponent matters? Yes. Okay. He was broken in this football game. You remember Dak, what he was leading up until this game. And then after this game, his it's been on a complete decline for oh, the most part. The numbers all are the striking. And so I think for him, it's the monkey on his back. He needs to have this. 
this King Kong size monkey ripped off to say, I went back to the place where it broke me and I get back some get back. I get some revenge on this team. It's not necessarily about Adrian Claiborne because he didn't do what he did in that game his entire career. So it's not the player that he's worried about. It's about going back to the, I guess, the scene of the crime and being able to rectify the situation, get your team a, a, a huge win, play well in that win so that you can say that no longer is a, 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 a cast that's shadowed over me in my career. And now it's two games in a row that we won on the road. And now you start going in the right direction. It matters to him a lot. This team hasn't played well twice in a row yet this season. Right. Like, a, yeah, it matters. Maybe not the opponent, in my opinion. Maybe not the opponent, but definitely. Thursday Night Football, we will be tuning in tonight. But for now, we are out of time. Jess, OT? Well, for me, it's going to be the offensive line. And Xavier Su Suofilo, uh, he gets his second start, and they're going to need you more than ever. This year, the, uh, the Dallas Cowboys are giving up pressure on the quarterback 30% of the time. That's somewhere around the fifth or sixth highest in the National Football League. Again, that and this team is returning back to the scene of the crime where all things went to hell last year. Uh, Sua Filo, they're going to be looking at you to make sure that thing is blocked up so that Dak has some time and he's not taking eight sacks again. Guys, this is the holiday season around here, and we're in the spirit of giving. So we're giving you another cover for tomorrow. Instead of our podcast, we didn't have a show on Tuesday, so stay tuned to a show here from the studio tomorrow. The game is on Sunday, so there's no school, there's no recess, there's no schoolyard. But I'll be at Mercedes-Benz Stadium, so it'll be me and Julio down by the 50-yard. That's my promise to you. Shout out, Paul Simon. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. I thought it Anyone was. Anyone in here like it? Jesse laughed. Text, Danny I laugh? heard Jesse no? laugh. I'm supporting. I'm supporting my team. We'll Mama pajama guys. rolled out of bed <laughs> and she went to the police station. Bye. When the <laughs> papa found out, he began to shout. <laughs>